Hey guys, my name is David Balzer. I'm part of the Brookville House of Worship team. I want to let you know that we are doing another podcast, and it's called Flow and Grow. I'll be joined with Andy Burkett during these podcasts, and what we're going to do, man, is we're just going to do what it says. We're going to come into this place. We're just going to talk about what's on our heart. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to pray for you, and we hope that flowing and growing in the Spirit, uh, allowing us to interact with you is wherever you are, whatever place you find yourself in, whether it's in a car, in the shower, I don't care. And we we want you and we invite you to, to this podcast called Flow and Grow. It's pretty chill. So, hey, welcome to Flow and Grow, another Brookville House of Worship podcast. Enjoy. Like, let's do this together. It's not just you can see me, but I can see your comments and you can see each other's comments. Like right now we're having fellowship. We're having ministry time right now. And once again, I just want to cast vision for what I believe is the uh, the ministry of Jesus Christ, not just for the Brookville House of Worship, but for the body. And I just want to read these statements. These are This is what the Lord gave me a few years ago, and it's literally, it's our vision. I, I used to constantly say it. I used to always be reading it, but I just want to throw this out there and I, I just want us to sit on this and just uh, think about it and like, let's please, let's share this together and let's see what the Lord provokes you to think as I'm reading this, okay? So the summary, we are a family, a gathering, our foundation being Jesus, our Lord exalted. His word, his promised Holy Spirit given as our complete authority. Can I get an amen for that? His word, his promised spirit given as our complete authority. And I just wanna sit here on this, like my goal right now is to preach what somebody else isn't doing. I just wanna preach what I see the word of God doing. I preach the fact that I see the word of God saying, go forth and multiply. Uh, signs and wonders, what demonstrations will follow they that believe. I see in the word people doing what the word says to do. So I just want to be transparent. There's no need for us to even consider talking about the ungodly things that people do and try to bring, bring into ministry. We're just going to talk about what we're called to do. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there and just keep going forward. We are called to be carriers of the gospel. We are called to demonstrate his word. We are called to facilitate his love, to show his love. And I was talking to Jamie, if Jamie's still on here. I was talking to him last night, like we are actually supposed to be sources, okay? Not only are we called to be sons and daughters, okay? But don't sons and daughters carry the very DNA of their father? I'm just gonna throw that again out there. Do not sons and daughters carry the very DNA of their father. If we've been born again, we are carriers of the gospel, the very blood of our father. We have been born not into a, a different image, but a whole new image in Jesus Christ. Amen. I got a lot of people watching. Uh, bless you guys. And I just want to keep encouraging. Please tune in with us. Keep talking. Keep joining us. Yes. Amen. Jamie said, that's right, preach it. So when we go out, we are not demonstrating our kingdom anymore. We're demonstrating the new kingdom we live in, the new life we live in, a whole new completely life, and that is of Jesus Christ, amen? So when we wrote these words down in our vision, it says his word and his promised Holy Spirit is given as our complete authority. Now, why is this so important? This is where it gets weird in the functional thing. When we gather together, and then when we go, the complete authority we have is the Holy Spirit and the Word, Jesus Christ, okay? That's what we have. That's what feeds us. That's our nutrients. That's what tells us to go. It's what gives us existence, life, and being. So when I'm led in these day-to-day -day things, so I go to work, and 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 I want to I want to be a, it can be in many ways. It can be, I'd be a fantastic steward of God's presence in that place by doing a fantastic job in what I do. It's manifesting his goodness by the daily things. Amen. All right. Charlie says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And, and I, so that verse right there, just reminds me, I was in Philippians today and it says about putting aside our pride. Well, what if putting aside our pride was actually burdening and help carrying something for our brothers and sisters, even though it completely inconveniences our life? And I just want to say that again. You said bear with one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, which is love. It is Jesus. So if we're fulfilling the law, it means putting our pride aside 
to, to do what he did and to do what he does and to be filled with the spirit of Jesus Christ and his word and to be led by that, not by our plans, not by our agendas, not by anything other than his presence. Amen. All right. Anybody else got anything there? Scott, God bless you. Uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce that name. I can say the last name Martino. God bless you, whoever you are. Uh, so yeah, I'm just summarizing what we feel is necessary for the bride of Christ to move forward, not only at the Brookville House of Worship, but in ministry as brothers and sisters. God bless you, Ken. I hope you're doing well. It's been a while since I saw you. All right. So let me punch another line here. This is uh, the second paragraph in our vision for Brookville House of Worship. It says, this will be a gathering of the Acts Church. I want you to hear that again. Do you understand that we are the Acts of the Apostles? We are the continuation of the Acts of the Holy Spirit. Can you say that with me? We're a continuation of the acts of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has not stopped. The word of God has not stopped. His demonstration, his kingdom has not stopped. In fact, it's just beginning. I would go as far as to say that we're a couple thousand years into it. He's filling his bride up. It says, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit. Come on. I will pour out my spirit on sons and daughters and they will dream and old men will have dreams. So we are just starting as far as I'm concerned. Like you can see right out there is Brookville. That's our town we live in. Like, wouldn't it be a wild manifestation for sons and daughters to be filled with the Holy Spirit, for people to be walking up and down these streets filled with the Holy Spirit? And one of our friends last night was saying, uh, you know, in the word it says, it will be a city shining brightly on a hill. Like, that's what we should be. Amen. These things, acts shall follow those who believe. Like, we should be a city shining on the hill. Like, you don't, it says you don't put a bushel over that light. Like that's what this kingdom should be. We should be literally lighting things up. I actually think we have a pride issue. Some people would say we have a pride issue when we want to manifest the kingdom of heaven because that has passed. No, I think we have a pride issue when we try to put the light of the gospel under a basket, when we try to put the kingdom of God under a basket and we're trying to hide what the kingdom wants to do. Actually, I think it's more of a pride issue as I was alluding to in Philippians that I was reading this morning that we should actually set aside our pride. And I, I wanna go there eventually. I think it's time that we light things up actually. And it's not to glorify ourselves. It's not to glorify our, our calling or our anointing. It's actually to draw life of Jesus Christ into other people's lives so they can be saved, born again, and set free. In Jesus' name, God bless you, Stacy. It's good to see you again. Louise, I'm not sure if I said, I think I did, but good morning to you, Louise. As always, I just want you guys to please engage with me. Today, I'm, I'm here by myself, but not. I'm here with you. <laughs> so I'm literally sitting at a table, as I always say. So it's just so good to be with you guys. So I'm just reiterating because I got more people coming on. My goal right now is just to cast a vision for the Brookville House of Worship, but even greater so cast a vision for what the bride of Christ is to be right now in this place in Jesus name. So yeah, as Scott said, absolutely. It is a pride issue withholding anything of God from anyone. I really think that's what, that's what we have an issue with. Sometimes in the bride of Christ, we're like, you can't be too boisterous. You can't be too zealous. Actually, I think we should be zealous for the things of God, but we've got to be full of the Holy Spirit to lead us in those things. And that's what it really comes down to. I really feel like we have become um, idle in a lot of ways because we don't jump off the jump off into the deep end when the Holy Spirit's telling us to do something. Uh, I, I can tell you this, and we were talking about this some last night. When the Holy Spirit touches something in your life and he gives you that that go, that's when lightning hits. You know, I think some things do come by faithfulness, okay? Amen, because everything is a seed, right? But there are things in your life that the Lord wants to just hit like a fire. And when he puts his word to it, when he puts his go to it, and he tells you, and you feel it, oh man, he's gonna touch it when he says do it. Amen? All right, so I feel like... uh there's a, there's a lot here because every every time it's like the word of God. When I read the word of God, Amen. Yeah, Jamie says God cares about our temperature, about temperature. He wants us on fire. Amen. I, I get caught up in Galatians one where it says that Paul was zealous for the traditions of his fathers. Okay, uh, he was zealous for the wrong things. Okay, but here's the thing: there's nothing wrong with being zealous. 
You just have to be zealous for the Spirit of God. God bless you, Karen. We love you, and we hope that you're doing well in Jesus' name. Karen Duster is watching with us. All right, so I'm going to hit this second line of this vision again. Once again, this is not just a vision for the Brookville House of Worship. I believe this is the vision. This is the calling. This is the go of Jesus Christ into this area. It says, this will be a gathering of the Acts Church, okay? I already said about that. Of the Holy Ghost Church continued, operating in the fivefold gifts of the body of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to add this visualization to you. When Jesus walked this earth, he embodied the five gifts of the Holy of, of Jesus. He was them. Okay, he was an apostle. He was a prophet. He was a teacher. He was an evangelist, and he was a preacher. Jesus was those five things. Now, here's the visualization part. When he ascended, he he left those gifts unto men. So the, let's look at it like this: like he went up and he dropped those five things down onto us. Okay. And some people carry those gifts. Some people walk in those gifts. It doesn't make them special. They're actually servants, okay? They serve the body of Christ in those functions. And those five gifts are the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist, okay? And I think I got them all. If I didn't, just just throw it out there. But those are the things, they bring a balance to the ministry, okay? They bring a balance to the edification, the teaching of the bride of Christ. And and I'm, like I said to begin with, I don't feel like preaching towards any church. I'm just talking about how we're going to do it here. I want to see the apostles rise up. I want to see the prophets rise up. I want to see the preacher rise up. I want to see the teacher, the evangelist. I want to see all these things rise up in Jesus name because they bring a fullness and guess what you bring a fullness let your pride at the door and bring a fullness to the table of the Lord I'm going to say it again let your pride at the door and bring a fullness to the table of God when you stand in pride you're holding back what the Lord wants to manifest through you to the bride of Christ to bring a fullness and a measure that I cannot bring but he has on you amen that's you not me (laughs) All right, so it says the gifts of the Holy Spirit are an absolute and completely essential. If you want to flow from the kingdom of heaven, you better get in a raft, and that's the Holy Spirit. He's going to carry you. He's going to bring you down that river and guide you in your path. Amen? It says we are a body founded in prayer. We are found in worship and in the presence of God. And why I feel this is so important, okay, because that raft I just said, God bless you, Heather. I hope you're doing all right. Hope everyone's healthy and safe in Jesus' name. Uh, Stacy says, God is multifaceted. If we don't bring him in, who will see that part of him? Amen. Amen. God is multifaceted. That's what I love about the table. That's what I love about the bride of Christ. There's so many moving parts. When we have one head, we have nothing other than um, by head. I mean, when we have individual members here that and we only represent one of them, we get limited vision. I don't want limited vision. I want that multicolored dream coat. I want all the aspects that the Holy Spirit is bringing in. Amen. Luis says, amen. God is calling me to this very position goes along with the word Nicole prophesied. Wasn't that beautiful what Nicole did? I'm so blown away by how Nicole just got on there yesterday and just, mm, she just hammered it out. It's such a blessing right there. Actually, that is exactly what I'm talking about. Nicole did exactly what I'm talking about. If it, God bless you, Andrea. If it wasn't for people like Nicole, myself, Andrea, Louise, all of you stepping out as individual parts being led by the head, we wouldn't have the fullness that we expect. We expect this. Yes. Amen. Colette said, amen. Healthy balance. Everyone has a calling and a purpose. This is the fullness of the bride of Christ. This is our expectation, not just at the Brookville House of Worship, but at the ministry of Jesus Christ, the reconciliation, the ministers of reconciliation, this is the expectation put on you as a new creation in Christ to no longer think like you used to. Leave it at the door. I'm going to keep pointing back there. There's the door. Don't think like you used to. Think like the new man in Christ Jesus filled with the Spirit of God that is part of the body of Christ. Amen. All right. Continuing on, the next paragraph says, We will be doers. I know a lot of this feels like it's repetitive, but come on. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Amen. It says we will be doers filled with his power. Okay. That comes back to this thing. Don't let your pride suppress his power. I'm going to say that again. Don't let your pride suppress 
his Holy Spirit power. The Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, the Lord of creations, and he wants to speak through you. He wants to manifest his goodness. Don't be the block, okay? Don't be the clot in Jesus' name. Let the blood flow in Jesus' name. All right. It says, we'll be doers filled with his power. We will, and this is really so important, we will be bound by our love. Can you say that with me? We will be bound by our love for one another. I have seen love not manifest in brothers and sisters. I have seen pride rise up. And I said, I don't want to talk about the negative. I'm not talking about another church. I'm talking about my brothers and sisters. Come on, we're not supposed to allow these disagreements to rise up. Isn't it amazing? And this is just something I've processed with my wife before and talked about. You know, we can go out in the world and somebody can say something to us and it's just a passive thought. It might affect us a little bit, but man, in the church, you can agree on 99 things. And I want you to literally think about that number. You can agree on 99 things and somebody says one thing, one thing that you don't understand Maybe you're not mature enough at that point. Maybe you should shelf it. Maybe it was something wrong. Maybe it was something even, we'll say the word heretical. But you allow that one thing to destroy what the love and the move of God is doing. And I know that it can be iffy by having a little bit of poison in the well. I get that. I get that. But I just want to call you into this place that you would have grace. See, God is a God of mercy, okay? Mercy triumphs over judgment, okay? So I think even when it comes to the bride of Christ, and I'm just alluding back to this line here, we will always be bound by our love for one another, knowing that we are a family, the body. I tell you what, even those people in this town that don't want anything to do with Andy Burkett, don't want anything to do, and I'm just gonna say some things that we are, full gospel, Spirit-filled, which makes no sense. Shouldn't we all be full gospel? Shouldn't we all be spirit-filled? Anybody who doesn't agree with the fivefold and these things, you know what? If they're born again, they are my brother and sister in Christ. And even we should lock arms with them. We should actually lock arms and celebrate that they preach Jesus. Amen? Do they preach Jesus? I'm going to say that again. Do they preach Jesus? All right, Champagne said, let's see if I can, there I can expand it. It says, last week I lost my voice for three days and hurt to speak for four days after that. I realized how much I took for granted being able to speak out or sing. Wow. I will definitely appreciate it to a greater degree from here on out. God does work all things together for good. Amen. And I just want to say this. I was so blessed last week, uh, Champagne and Jamie, uh, Jamie preached, champagne sang, and it was truly beautiful to see you worship, to see you just in love with Jesus. Like that is the new wine. That is the standard. I don't even want to say new. That is the standard set forth. Uh, that is the Mary standard. Champagne was at the feet of the Lord in front of this whole room of people. She could have cared that she was right over there. She was in front of this whole room, in front of the camera. But you know what? She was in front of her Lord and her Savior, Jesus Christ, being led by the Spirit of God in his presence. That is what we want to see. How can we go out unless we're filled up? Amen? Okay. And this next paragraph. (laughs) Oh, that was a weird meme. Amen. I want to just keep pushing into this, but I also encourage you, please keep sharing. This is the table of the Lord. So these next few statements are a little more foundational, all right? We believe we are saved in Jesus Christ, reconciled to God by receiving salvation through repentance, through the blood shed on the cross. We believe spirit and water baptisms are foundational principles in our faith. And Okay, I'll read this again. Water baptism being important for the outward display of an inward change and spirit baptism being necessary for operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. I believe it's important we say these foundational things. God bless you, Denise. I hope you're doing well. Uh, we, I recently had somebody reach out to me and says, hey, can can I get a baptism done at the Brookfield House of Worship? And I was just curious. I'm like, I wonder... What do they mean by that? Do they just simply want baptized or do they want to know if we believe in water baptism? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, You said it's breaking up. Is anyone else experiencing the breaking up issue? 
If you could let me know if anyone else is experiencing that. Looks like my Wi-Fi is good. Uh, but so, so I believe it's important that we hit these foundational things as well. Amen. I believe in the baptism of water being a representation of Jesus Christ going into that grave and coming out born again. I want you to hear that. I believe that baptism is powerful. When we go down into that ground, well, Jesus went into the grave and he came up and he was what? What happened with Jesus? He was resurrected to perfect life. And guess what? In Christ, we go down into that grave, we die, and we come out and we're resurrected in Christ. That is that is the water baptism. It is for the remission of our sins. Amen. And then, guys, thank you very much. Sorry, Denise, I don't know what was going on, but I, I hope that you can hear it. I've heard sometimes that um, it can be a little bit crackly, you know, live, but it's better on the, the restream. So, so secondly, with that, the word actually says about baptisms, okay? And even John said, and Jamie was talking about this last night, he said, greater is one who is coming that'll baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. I want you to say that with me. Greater is one who is coming with the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. And that what Jesus is talking about, he said, John baptized for remittance of sins, but now John, now Jesus is coming to baptize us with fire and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you guys say that? He's coming to baptize us with fire and the Holy Spirit. So this is a, bapti- a different baptism. <clears throat> Amen. Scott, we bless you as well. I hope you had a good week. Uh, I saw you were with uh, Sean Foyt um, and let us worship for the New Year's. That's pretty cool. God bless you. So I'm just hitting some, some foundations here. Yes, we believe in baptism by water. Do I believe you have to be baptized in water to be born again? I don't believe that. I believe you can be born again, but it is a great thing to do without going into the water. But I say you should do it if you have the opportunity. Amen, do it. Now, do I believe you need baptized in the Holy Spirit? I absolutely believe you need baptism by baptized in the Holy Spirit so you can be filled and functional with the kingdom of heaven. God just doesn't want us just born again. He wants us renewed in his ways. He wants that fire of God to burn us out, clean us out, and fill us up with his kingdom. In Jesus' name. Hey, Sean, I hope you're doing well. Bless you in Jesus. Uh, as always, we're just sitting at the table, so... Toss out what you got to say. I'm here to listen. So Colette says in Proverbs 9, 4 through 6, whoever wants to know me and receive my wisdom, come and dine at my table and drink of my wine. Lay aside your simple thoughts and leave your paths behind. Agree with my ways, live in my truth, and you will find righteousness. Amen. I love that. Lay aside your simple thoughts and leave your paths behind agree with my ways live in my truth and you will find my righteousness and uh amen thank you very much for sharing that i do want to get back to this vision but i also want to throw this out and this is something um that's been talked about a lot lately in in our circle um what are the strongholds and by strongholds let's move beyond thinking like what are the sinful things because that's not what i'm talking about What are the things that are keeping you from entering into the call the Lord has on your life? Now, let's get a little more specific. What are the things that are holding you in bondage? Is it financial bondage? Is it I work so hard and I labor so hard because I've created a lifestyle that demands that I have to literally labor labor this hard to maintain this lifestyle or I'm a slave to it because I've created this lifestyle. Now I literally am enslaved and have to keep doing it to pay my bills. Now I want to call you to a place, and this is going to be touchy to some people, because I don't believe the Lord wants us to live in poverty. I believe he does want us to prosper, but it has to be out of his prosperity. It has to be out of his gospel and his leading. Okay, I want you to hear that. He wants you to live out of his prosperity and his gospel and his leading. That's where our abundance comes from. His leading, his word, his gospel. All right, so what am I trying to say? Let me elaborate a little bit. And I'm going to be personal with you. So I was a supervisor at a position, at a job that I had, and it was so great. Like I got, I got paid well. I had great bosses I worked for. I was the first employee for the company. I was there for quite a while. And they seriously are amazing people, and I'm so blessed by them. But... It cost me a lot 
to have that job. And the money I made, it didn't matter because it cost too much. It cost me peace. It cost me time. So the lifestyle that I lived before demanded that I had a job like that. The lifestyle I lived demanded that I had to make a certain amount of money to keep up with my needs. So that's what I'm really getting at. The lifestyle you live, is it leading you in a place where you can freely give, freely receive, say, hey, the Lord's calling me there. I'm going to go at the drop of a hat because that's all I have to do. That's the only thing I'm a slave to. We're only supposed to be slaves to the Lord Jesus Christ. We shouldn't be slaves to the things we want, the slaves to the things we feel like we need. We should be slaves to the call of Jesus Christ on our lives. And what I'm getting at is I see so many brothers and sisters in Christ who can't move and freely go because they're worn out day to day. They're burnt out day to day. It's cost them way too much. This is what I'm getting at. These strongholds we have in our life just are not sinful things. They are things that have implicated us into a point where we can't even serve the Lord because we're burnt out. Come on, bride, get out of this place where you're burnt out. You need to be in a place where you're at peace. What is costing you more than you need to pay for it? If the Lord's costing, no, I'm done, done the Lord. If your lifestyle is costing you peace and you can't flow in the Holy Ghost, you need to change it. These are the strongholds that I think are more damning. I can't say that. I can't, that's not true. These things cost us a lot. It's what I really want to get at. And Jamie just said something here. Yes, amen, Denise, rest. Rest is required. We need to get rid of the things that cost us peace because the Lord wants us to rest in his peace, rest in his goodness. We can't flow on the Holy Ghost if the cares of the world and the weeds are coming up and choking out the gospel in our lives. If we allow these things to take roots, if we allow the cares of this world to take away the nourishment that the gospel is trying to bring us, we can't flow in the Holy Ghost. We can't be existent for brothers and sisters. This is where it really got real for me. I had become so busy, and I'm still, honestly, I'm healing right now. Like, I'm in the process right now of healing. I become so busy that I really was no good to my brothers and sisters in Christ. I was so distracted, so overwhelmed, and it deteriorates your mind. It takes away from your calling when you're so busy so filled up with the cares of this world, it literally pulls your ability to be of the mind of Christ and to be in a simple place. Amen. Denise says, spend time with him, pray and rest and exercise. So Jamie says in the parable of the, there, that's what I was just talking about actually. Uh, in the parable of the four soils, the greatest fruit choker were the affairs of this life and deceitfulness of riches. We have to clear some schedule for Jesus. When we seek first the kingdom, he will provide provision. We have to get off the hamster wheel business. Amen. Amen. Rose said it's uh, being in a position of surrender. Amen. 100%. Thank you so much, Rose. Uh, Scott, sorry, Jamie says busy, bound under Satan's yoke. Wow. Wow, that's a good one there. <laughs> so that that's really something that I've had to deal with really heavily and okay so let me let me share the testimony of what's really really cool i was ready to lay it down i was ready to lay down that rat race that busyness i had a meeting with the owners of the company i work for in march so we're talking almost a year ago and i said i can't do this anymore i said i need a stable schedule it's hard to minister you know, it's hard to be consistent when you don't know when you're going to be home, if you don't know if you're going to be in the, the same state, where whatever you're going to be. I said, I need some, as Scott just said, God loves balance. I need some balance and consistency in my life because my life, it was getting choked out by the cares of this world. And I don't need that anymore. I need the, I need the cares of Christ. I need the mind of Christ to lead me. I need the peace of Christ to lead me. I need the spirit of God to lead me so I can be a benefit to my brothers and sisters. So I can lay down my prideful ways. And how can that pride be? That pride could be my job. It could be all these different things. So I can be a light, a city on a hill shining brightly for my, for my neighbor, for my son, for my daughter, for my wife, for somebody far off. How can I be of use if I'm too consumed by the cares of this world? So I found myself in this position where I met with my 
and the owners of my company and I said, I, I just need, I need to lay this down. I need to work less. I need consistency. And they honored me with that. They said, yeah, we can do that. Uh, so I stepped back from my position and, uh, it still was hard though. It, it, the, it got to the point where I was working more again. We'll just put it that way. My position changed, but I still didn't change a lot hour wise and there was no consistency. And, uh, I was ready to sacrifice my job for peace. I was willing to take a job that would have paid half the money. So I would have had a consistent schedule. So I would have the peace of the Lord so I could rest in him. And here's another side to this. I want you to think about this. Get yourself financially in a place where it doesn't cost you everything. If you don't have the job you have, we should not be slaves to this world. We shouldn't have to have everything so that when we financially change our world falls flat on its face we're actually supposed to be the lenders we should be the one sowing finances into the world we are not supposed to be the borrowers christians are actually supposed to be the ones lending to the world so i want you to think about that get yourself in a place where you financially have peace with what the Lord's doing in your life and where you are the lender, not the borrower. So when your circumstance changed, you say, I'm fulfilled. I have everything I need in Christ. I wasn't a slave to that finance and my needs are met in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. So here's the crazy thing. Here's the scandalous thing of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, within the past month, I actually left the job that I was at for a long time. And you know what I thought it would cost me? I thought it would cost me financially. And this is just a testimony. And I'm not proud of this. I just thank God. I thought that it would cost me financially to leave the job I was at for so long, that I was a supervisor, that I was treated well, they took care of me. Well, not only did I leave the job and I was offered another job that I would be inside all the time, which praise God, they offered me more money. And they said, you can work straight eights. You can do whatever you want. Just be here at this, you know, this meet of the day and this time. And you do whatever you want time wise, essentially within that. The Lord rewarded me even in that because I wanted his peace. I didn't need the provision because I wasn't a slave to it. I needed his peace. And I want you to hear that. Do you want the Lord's peace? Don't be a slave. Be a seeker of the Lord's peace and he will provide for you. Amen. All right, you guys are talking here and I'm doing a lot of talking. Amen. Scott says, this is good. God loves balance. Amen. Bless you, Jasmine. Good to see you last night. Marlena, I hope you're doing well. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of things. Amen. Thank you, Stacy. Praise God. Isn't it crazy? I was ready to say, Lord, whatever. I mean, I, whatever you have, I'll take. And not only in that place of submission of seeking his peace and his presence, like he provided more than I could have asked. So praise God. All right, a little bit more of this vision, all right? It says our purpose. And I wanna say this again, because a lot of people have come and went probably. This is, I'm just vision casting what we originally laid out as our foundations. Actually, we call them our pillars. What we believe the pillars are of the house of worship, which are pillars of the bride, pillars of what we should be doing, not just us, but the whole world in Christ. Our purpose, we are disciples. Okay, I just wanna say that again. We are disciple, disciplined followers of Jesus Christ. I want to say that again. We are disciples. We are disciplined followers of Jesus Christ. We bring the kingdom of heaven to earth because where is the kingdom? Come on, come on, somebody say it. Where is the kingdom of heaven? It is within you. It is within us. So as sons and daughters, we bring the kingdom of heaven. We, I know this is some, to some people, this is like a word that triggers them and they might not agree with it because it's been abused, but it's a kingdom word. We manifest the kingdom of heaven. We manifest the goodness of God. We are sons and daughters. Amen. Denise, you said, God has provided rent for me and my daughter for 10 years. Wow. That is mind blowing. Praise God. Praise God. So we are disciples of Jesus Christ. We will bring the kingdom of heaven. And I have here in like a little subheading and all of its attributes will bring its wholeness, will bring its peace, will bring its faith, will bring its goodness and et cetera. And the father's heart to every situation. And I tell you what, when we're, when we're writing the vision down and, and I saw somebody said that, write the vision down. 
this is what we did. When we were writing it down, this, this part was so sincerely important to me because this speaks grace. And I just want to read this again, that last line, because this is grace. It says, and we will bring the Father's heart to every situation. What is the Father's heart? I want us to think about that. We will bring his mercy, his peace. And I, I just want to kind of try to wrap our mind around this. We will bring his, his grace and his rest in every judgment we make, in every situation we approach, in every horrific thing, in every beautiful thing, we're going to come at it with the mind of Christ and we're going to seek it in, in truth, but in grace because every situation deserves his grace. If there's a woman caught in adultery, what did Jesus do? He says, you who have no sin cast the first stone. And that's just an expression of the kingdom of heaven right there. That's an expression of the grace and the mercy of Christ. We can't come at people from a standardized thought. We've got to come at people through the, bla- through the blood and the grace of Jesus Christ. No situation deserves abuse. No situation deserves condemnation, okay? If you're in Christ, you are a bearer of the gospel of the kingdom of heaven, You bring forth your grace. You bring forth that truth. If someone is caught in adultery, if someone's murdered, if someone's done anything disgusting, I want you to manifest the kingdom of heaven right then and there to them. I'm telling you that line meant so much to me. And we will bring the Father's heart to every situation. Do not make anything cookie cutter. You seek the Lord's face and you find out what his mercy says about that situation. You find out what caused that. You find out the deficiency and you make sure that they know that the Lord fills that up in Jesus' name. You make sure that they know the Lord of all of creation wants to manifest his peace into that situation. And his goal above all things is to fill you and heal you in Jesus' name so you can be a son or a daughter bearing the good news of Jesus Christ. Don't approach situations with cookie cutter mentalities. Approach it with the grace and the gospel of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Mm. <laughs> Colette says, boom, yes. Uh, truth with, uh, Scott says, truth with grace is God's heart. Amen. Uh, Scott says, what an incredible testimony. So encouraging for others seeking God in this area. Amen. Thank you, Scott. All right. So the last few paragraphs. <clears throat> I've been talking a lot here. I'm used to having David with me, a little fill in here. Okay, our desire, this is continuing the, uh, the vision casting, okay? Our desire is to equip the saints for every work of ministry. And that one line, I hope, I'm just saying this, if you know Andy Burkett, if you know me, you know that is my desire. I want everyone on here. I want everyone that's in this room. I want everyone that's on the street. I want everyone that's in this town. I want you to step into what you were called to do because you have something that the Lord wants to manifest that I don't have. I'm going to read this line again. Our desire is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. I believe, and we talked about this yesterday, me and Jamie and some other people, that some people have an issue with pride. And how does that manifest? It manifests in the fact that they don't want to step up. They don't want to step into a place. They would be rather be complacent and have no, and here's the word, they don't want to have responsibility. Well, guess what? If you're in Jesus Christ, you have a responsibility to steward the Holy Spirit, to steward the word of God, and to be good stewards of it, and to manifest it in Jesus' name. It's not just me, it's not just you, it's all of us in the bride of Christ. And this comes back to what I was saying before. Don't put yourself in a place where you don't have time and everything costs you too much where you can't do it because you have no peace, because you're burnt out. Put yourself in a place where you have peace in Jesus Christ so you can be responsible for the word put in you so you can be responsible for the Holy Spirit leading you and so pride doesn't rule your life because we aren't called to be prideful. We're called to be full of his Holy Spirit and his word and it to lead us in all truth. Amen. Okay, so let me get back here. Ultimately, 
this is part of the vision again, leading people to their destiny in Christ Jesus. See, that's what the body of Christ is actually here to do. Lead people to their destiny, reconciliation in Christ Jesus. Did Jesus not come to seek and save that which was lost? He has come to redeem, to set us back in. And this is what I love about this one word I'm going to use, righteousness. Matthew 6.33 says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness And it doesn't say it might. It says, and it will be added to you. Bless you, Brittany. It's so good to see you. It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and it will be added unto you. Now you tell me if that's a reflection of the garden. In the garden, they were in the cool of the day with the Lord of all of creation. They were in the presence of Jesus because they had righteousness with God. They could boldly approach his throne. They could boldly be in his presence. So this line in our vision says, ultimately leading people to their destiny. Our destiny is righteousness and to be in the presence of God Almighty, our creator. That is our destiny as sons and daughters. And his plan right now is being fulfilled as we are sons and daughters and we fulfill this plan of his destiny, knowing him, that we would manifest the kingdom of God to brothers and sisters right here, right now, that we would actually show who we are as sons and daughters, be lovers like he is, grace-filled like he is, peace-bearers like he is, so we can manifest his fruits, his holiness, because we know him, we display him, all right? So the next line, it says, ultimately leading people to their destiny, and this is where this really encompasses a lot of things. This is what's so beautiful about the bride of Christ, because there's a fullness that we keep talking about that I don't embody as a, as an individual, I'm just one person. It says the Lord, as the Lord Jesus has ordained for them in any expression. And what do I mean by that? I'm going to tell you right now that there are teachers that can manifest the spirit of God and can change a whole group of students' lives. There's going to be doctors that can manifest the kingdom of God that can change everything because their hand as they're doing surgery is led by the king of all of creation. There are going to be coaches in in locker rooms that are going to be filled with the spirit of God that are going to change the mindsets of whole entire teams because the kingdom of God is going to manifest. You know, some people think this is a scandalous thing and they think it's too good to be true, but I believe the Lord of creation is going to influence businesses, education system, prisons, uh, the government system. I believe that the spirit of God manifest is going to change everything around us because when his fullness penetrates things, it will become kingdom minded. Say that with me. When it fulfills it, it will be kingdom-minded. And you tell me why you wouldn't want to have a kingdom-minded government, why you wouldn't want to have a kingdom-minded education system, why you wouldn't want to have a kingdom-minded entertainment system. See, everything was for the Lord's goodness. I want to see the kingdom of God manifest in all of these areas. So I'm going to hit this line again. This is why this is in our vision. Ultimately, leading people to their destiny, the Lord Jesus has ordained for them. What is the destiny that the Lord has ordained for you that you should manifest in the place you're at right now? As a mom, as a father, as a a caretaker, as a, a doctor, as a physician, as a school teacher, whatever you are, what is the, the destiny that you are to manifest the spirit of God to people and win sons and daughters to the Lord of all of creation? Amen? Is it, is it in technology? Is it in academics? All right, now I'm just going in circles. Next line, it says, Jesus will touch all of these arenas when he gains an expression in them. And I'm telling you, I'm crazy enough to believe it. I'm crazy enough to believe that God wants to touch all of creation. Amen? He wants to touch all of creation because we are all sons and daughters who are born again. And if you aren't born again, He wants to reconcile and seek that which was lost. See, this is so simple. You have to lay down your pride and manifest the kingdom of heaven, be led by the spirit of God, rest in him, pull on him, love him, be in relationship with him, be with brothers and sisters in Christ, build each other up and just manifest what he is. That's all you got to do. I know it sounds so hard, but there's one thing that stops it, and that is pride. And pride looks 
a lot of different ways. And we talked about some of them. Some of it's, I'm not even going to go back. But I believe pride, pride and the fall. Pride is what leads to everything falling down. Pride stops the move of God because we have free will. You are the representation. The kingdom of heaven is within you. Pride stops a move of God. And I notice some people, it might sound weird. Well, he's God. He can do whatever he wants. Well, he chose to work through man. Pride stops the move of God. So don't be proud. Be filled. Be humble. Represent the kingdom. All right. In this last line, and this is, uh, this is, this is, this is good. Where is this going to happen? This is in the vision. This is going to happen in houses. Jamie, Champagne. This is going to happen on streets. This is going to happen at work. This is going to happen in schools. It's going to happen at bars. It's going to happen at jails. It's going to happen at meeting houses of worship. It's probably going to happen less at houses. Of, I don't want to say houses of worship. These things are probably going to happen less at churches than they should out in the streets because that's where everybody's at. Not everybody's sitting in a church. Okay. We should be manifesting these things more on the streets, at work, at jails, at bars, in the places we're at than we should at the church because in the church, that's not where we're all at. We're all doing life, all right? All right, a physical, and this is just a personal statement that I put in the the vision. And this is a hard one because now we're a few years into this. You know, we've been at the Brookville House of Worship mm, about two years and three months. And uh, it says a physical location will not be an end all or a primary source of ministry. And I tell you what, I still believe that firmly. Like we are so blessed that we can meet here, but this is not it. This building, I'm telling you, it's an empty room and it does nothing. This building has no presence. It has nothing. It's the spirit of God and the people coming in here that bring, call it just said fire, that bring the fire, that bring the kingdom of heaven. A building does nothing. Just like a body does nothing that's not filled with the presence of God. It is the presence of God that brings it. A location is the last line of the vision of our presence. I want to say that one more time. A location is simply a byproduct of our presence. Don't let, and this goes back to what I was saying, like what are things costing you? What does it cost you? Does it cost you peace? Does it cost you the ability to go out and minister? Does, and this is for people in, in ministry, more so what I'm saying right now. And this is a reality we have to be aware of. Does having a facility cost you the ability to go out financially because you're so indebted to paying the bills of a place that you can't afford to go minister, that you can't afford to be free to do what the Lord's calling you? I I see this, and once again, I said I don't want to talk about ministers or ministries, so I'm just going to talk about us. The reality is there are times when finances get low. Do we focus more on paying the bills than we do on ministering? Are we, is our attention divided because now we're worried with the cares of this world? Are we concerned with um, debts than mo- more than we are freedom? I'm just going to shut up there. There's some really good things I could say, but once again, I choose not to speak things against other people and what's, what we do. We're, all right, so we're just so blessed to Brookville House of Worship that we have a place we can meet and that we have a place. You just said host. Scott says every decision, every thought, every action has a cost. Um, we, sorry, Stacy says go after it. That's it. What you said, what's so good about presence beginning location? Like this is what I love about a lot of our brothers and sisters. And this is the church on the go thing. Like this is 100% the fullness of what, Jamie and Champagne and what church on the go and even what this place is like the Brookville House of Worship. Yes, we have a facility. We have a name, all this stuff, but that doesn't mean a thing to me. I'm just being honest with you. I could care less if we were meeting in a cardboard box and calling it a church. We are the bride of Christ when we come together and we sit with each other. There's an anointing, a corporate anointing. It says, do not forsake the assembling of the brethren. When we come together, there's just this multiplication, this beautiful thing. There's a sound. Some 
some of you might have never heard this, but I, I hear it so often because we enter this place of rest. And he said about rest and peace. When we worship so many times, we get to this place where I'm not relying on a certain time to make something happen. I'm not relying on a certain song to make something happen. I'm just resting in his presence and saying, Lord, what do you have right now? What's the next note? And then all of a sudden, Andrew or Andrea Wilson uh, Hudson, sorry, I'm saying your maiden name. Andrea will start singing a melody and the Lord's spirit is on it. And then we'll start singing a praise and then we'll start singing a new song. It's these moments of spontaneous leading that you can't get when you're an indebted place, when you're setting your finances on, making sure people are paid a certain wage, paid a certain something, because people don't want that a lot of times. And I'm telling you that I'm sold more out to the gospel of Jesus Christ and doing what he wants in a moment than I am what men want in a moment. You will not buy me in a moment. You won't get me to play a song for you. You won't get me to play uh, your favorite set list or to sing your song or to preach what you want. You can't buy us. You can't buy the people who are free in Christ. And that's this whole bondage financially thing. A lot of Mm, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. I keep stopping my place there. But I'm saying you will not come into the Brookville House of Worship and manipulate us because you don't finance me. (laughs) That sounds really forward. But the kingdom of heaven finances us. The kingdom of heaven fills us up. We are filled up with his presence and his leading. Now, do I love when people sow into the Brookville House of Worship? Yes, obviously I do, because it furthers what the Lord is doing. But when, when we are being led by the people tithing when they say I give you this now you do what I want you got a problem Moses led the people out of Egypt when they murmured and complained what happened now you go into numbers and you read when they sent out the 12 spies I'm just going to preach a little and teach her when they sent in numbers when they sent out the spies to check out the promised land uh, Joshua and Caleb came back with a different uh different idea of the promised land than the 10 other spies. The 10 other spies complained and said, you know, it's terrible. Like we're like grasshoppers in their sights. Uh, And then Joshua and Caleb like, no, it's just as you said, it's a land flowing with milk and honey. And uh, those 10 other spies, they murmured and complained after Moses, by after Moses said, go and evaluate the land, By God's command, they did. But when they came back, they complained. What happened to those 10 spies? They were struck dead, okay? But Joshua and Caleb said, know that it's a land flowing with milk and honey, just as you said. Now, here's what I'm telling you. A lot of times we are led by the people when we should be led by the by the Spirit of God and His Word. And when people rule the thing, it it gets ugly. We, even as... um, I'm kind of getting all over the place here with my words. Even as I am what I would consider a founder of this location in this concept, I am not the founder of the body of Christ, obviously. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And um, we have got to be careful. We have got to follow the spirit. I've got to follow the spirit of God. I can't follow you. And you can't necessarily just follow me. You've got to follow the spirit of God. And I know that sounds weird because so many people are so sold out to like honoring the man, honoring the man, which is true. But Jesus Christ is the man. Holy Spirit is the man. Now I humble myself and I put my position, I put myself in a position of submitting to him. And we're supposed to judge what the prophets say now. We're supposed to be led by the spirit of God. But I'm telling you, back then and still today, you, Moses said it was going to be a certain way, and they murmured and complained. Joshua and Caleb said, it's just as you said. It's a land flowing with milk and honey. And I'm telling you, when you allow the congregants who are led by their flesh to... Here's what it really comes down to. I know I did a lot of scrambling there. Don't allow people that are being led by the flesh to run the show. Jesus Christ is the... The Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. That is what we submit to, okay? Don't allow sheep to lead. You allow the head to lead, which is Jesus Christ. Um, Louise said, founders of the head. Jesus is the head of the body. Amen. I know there's, it gets really wordy there, and I, you can get tangled up in that. But we have got to be a people who honor each other, honor the people who are leading, be fed, 
But when it comes down to it, you can't allow your flesh to lead things. And that's what I see happening a lot. So I'm just going to tie that back into the vision. That's why it's so important for the vision of the Brookville House of Worship is to submit to brothers and sisters in Christ, to honor each other, to love each other, and to be led by the Spirit of God. When it comes down to it, it the Bible says to not be a carnal minded. And a lot of, we would say, sheeps in wolf's clothing or yeah, wolves in sheep's clothing. There we go. Uh, we allow a lot of carnal mindedness into, uh, into establishments and then it becomes carnal minded instead of being led by the spirit minded. Go read a Romans eight and, and see what it is to be a spirit minded people. All right. I'm, I'm just talking, talking a lot now and I don't like it. All right. So what do you got to say? And I'm probably going to. Probably gonna get off here. I think I've been talking to my talking to you guys and talking to this room for about an hour now by myself. <laughs> Scott said, This is so powerful, we can all apply these principles to our lives, our responsibilities to God and the vision He is directing us in. Amen. God bless you, Brenda. I hope you're doing well. Um, so I just toss out a few things. We will be here tonight at seven o'clock at the Brookfield House of Worship. And uh, I'm excited just to, let's just say this, I'm excited to get in the presence of God and see what he has to say, see what he has to manifest, see what, see what happens tonight. Like, that's exciting to me. What do you have tonight, Lord? Come on. Uh, Stacy said, go after it. That's it. What you said, so good about presence beginning location. Brenda said, I thank you. God is awesome. Amen. God is awesome. Amen. Amen. So I was going to start this with a worship song, but then I just started. <clears throat> Amen. Brenda said, my nine-year-old grandson is now praying for kids in school. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. My wife uh, and my son, Emery, my son's 15. They used to, she would take him out and they would have this, like, they would pray for people. And they called it Playground Revival when he was younger. He's, he's 15 now, so he doesn't really, doesn't really play in a playground. Yes, Jamie, you going to preach tonight? <laughs> Jamie says he'll be coming tonight. And uh, I want to encourage people, man. Jamie good and Champagne good, they're good vessels. They're vessels wanting to be filled with that new wine, that what the Spirit of God is doing. And I'm so thankful for brothers and sisters. There's so many of you on here. <clears throat> Rose, Louise, Scott, Christmas Miller. God bless you. I'm not sure who you are. But Stacy and, and anybody, I'm sorry if I missed it. I'm just, the Colette, like I'm just tossing people out there. I'm so thankful for you guys. I'm thankful for the brothers and sisters who are vessels that want to be filled with the wine of the new wine, the goodness of God, what he has. And, the, and not only do you want to be filled up, like let's just visualize that glass. Not only do you want to be filled up, but you want to overflow. See, it's not just about us getting filled up. It's about being restful in that place so we can overflow. So we can spill into other people's lives. So we can inspire them. So we can prophesy in their lives. So we can edify them, exhort them, show them what the Lord of Lords has in Jesus' name. Uh, Scott says, fill us up with new wine and fresh fire. Amen. Scott, uh, Jamie says, hope to see everyone fellowship in the Lord tonight. Drink the new wine. Amen. Brenda says, more. Let it pour out of me, Lord. Amen. I, pray, I, I agree with that. Oh, so I just had a song come to my mind. We're going to sing this out and uh, let me see if I can find it and then we'll be done. I, and I want to encourage you as I sing this, if you know it, please sing it with me. I got to find it here. Hey, real quick, I also want to toss this out there. Uh, if anybody likes to worship Jesus, <laughs> I know that's a pretty broad statement. If you feel uh, led, I would check out Jonathan and Miranda Pizzuti, 
so Jonathan's written a, like a rap album, and I want to encourage you to go to uh, Crucified Christ by Jonathan Pizzuti. You can find it. I'm going to say it again. Jonathan Pizzuti. And Jonathan, a brother and sister is here that are involved with the Brook House of Worship and Jubilee up in uh, Dubois, sorry, Clearfield. But it's uh, Pizzuti is Jonathan, and Pizzuti is spelled P-E-Z-Z-U-T-I. He just released a rap album, and it's so anointed. I want to encourage you to go and check it out and uh, give him some plays, give him some downloads. And what's really cool about it is you're just not supporting a brother, but you're actually hearing the word of God through his his worship and his ministry. It's pretty wild, his, his songs. All right, so I want you to sing this out with me if you can. It's uh, called Build My Life. And me and Jamie, we kind of, this is something we go back to a little bit. It's a song that, that I sang one time at one of his meetings and it really spoke to him and it speaks to me all the time. And if you know the words, if you could just sing it. And uh, I just want to say this before we get going, I'm going to end after this, but Lord, I thank you for keeping us well. I thank you for your rest, just stillness in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for your, your presence. Lord, I thank you for this renewing wonder of the Spirit of God, that you would restore this wonder before our eyes. That though there may be things going off over here, there might be explosions in our life on this side and, and death on this side and fear behind me, that we would be so caught up in the goodness going before me, in the greatness of our Lord, in the wonder of your majesty, and the wonder of your kingdom would be before us, Father that your fullness would go before us and that's all we could see. You know, when I think about Paul being blinded on the road to Damascus, man, that you would blind us with your presence, not in a way that harms our eyes, Lord, but in a way that that's all we can see is the goodness of God, that we would shine, that you would shine on us and we'd be like, not just like Moses that, that, that gets lit up by a reflection, but that we would be that reflection, that we would be that source to someone. We would just be so full of your presence, Lord, that we cannot even tell what's going on behind us. That fullness would fill us up, Lord, that that would be in my brothers and sisters' lives as well, that they'd be so filled up with that light in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I just want to like put this back out there one more time. It says, show me who you are. See, when I hear these words, I just don't hear something. I hear spiritual principles of the kingdom of heaven. When I hear the word of God, I just don't simply hear like adjectives and nouns. I hear commands from the mouth of the throne room of God. I hear commands that carry boldness and loudness and love and truth and, and ministry. I hear the mouth of the voice of all of creation saying something for us to do. These aren't just simple thoughts. These are commands. These are filled with power in Jesus' name. And I want you to hear this. This is the last words of these songs. It says, fill your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Come on, holy, there is no one like you. When we get in his holy presence, when we worship you, holy God, it sets us in a mindset that we can not, not deny that you are the Lord. You are our God. You are the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the one who saves us, the one who leads us, the one who wants to fill us and to take us out, to lead us into those around us and to show us and manifest the sons and daughters of all of creation. Father, that my brothers and sisters would rise up like fires, many fires would happen, little kindlings that would just come in revival, that the power of God would just ignite every piece of wood in this place. Every person would be a flame in the spirit of God. And when we combine these flames, we have a mighty torch, a mighty revival, a mighty city on the hill shining brightly, Father. Father, that we would get our hopes up, that we would get so stirred up in your presence, so filled with your goodness, that you couldn't shut us up. Nobody could shut us up. Nothing could shut Our past can't shut us up. Our present can't shut us up. And our future can't shut us up because your goodness has been filling us, Father. Your goodness is all I see. Your goodness is what I fell in love with. Your peace is what I fell in love with. I fell in love with your son, Jesus Christ. And that's what sets our vision on fire in Jesus' name. That we would cast off every care in this world, be it financial, be it heartache, abuse, divorce, 
anything, any care that this world throws at us, that it would not cost us our peace in Jesus' name, that peace would be our, our main foundation, the peace in the gospel of Jesus Christ in Jesus' name. Mm. Mm. And we're just going to sing out these powerful kingdom truths one more time this bridge and it says and I will build my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and I will put my trust in oh you oh Lord and I will not be shaken father we're not going to build our lives on on unfirm foundations father we're going to build them on the solid rock on Christ the rock on which we stand that firm foundation father so father I thank you for the plans that you lay before us I thank you for your spirit speaking these plans plainly and boldly into us. And Father, I thank you that pride is not the plan of the kingdom of heaven, that pride would lay down in Jesus' name. In fact, I command pride to fall in my life and in my wife's life and my children's life, that pride would be a thing of the past that we don't look to. It's actually something we step over now in Jesus' name. And that your spirit would lead us, Father. Bless the Lord and all that is within me, Father. I worship and bless your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. Seven o'clock. We'll be here tonight. I'm not worried about the place. You know where the place is. I'm worried about worshiping. I'm worried about being with my brothers and sisters in Christ. And I pray that you'll be here with us. I pray that you'll bring his kingdom and his fullness and you'll help overflow in this place in Jesus' name. I pray that there will be an abundance so much that this, this place cannot handle it. I'm not talking financially. I'm talking the spirit of God. I pray that there is such a wild manifestation of the presence of God that people will talk about it forever and that they'll say what happened that night changed everything. I'm wild enough to believe that that can happen. I'm wild enough to believe that the Lord wants to start right here, right now. Why not us? Why not this generation? Why not in Jesus name? So I bless you guys and I'll see you all later. Thank you so much for spending this time with me at this table. Louise, we love you and we're so thankful for you scott same with you we're so honored that you guys would take this time marlena thank you thank you it says thank you for taking time to edify and encourage the body seeing everyone come together on here it blesses me thank you so much marlena for for being with us john i i saw that you were there for a moment you might still be here i'm not sure colette thank you again jamie i'm looking forward to spending time with you my wife i'll see you in a little bit <laughs> tiffany uh, James, Jim, ah, there it is, James. I'm sorry, I'm so, I think Jim. Thank you so much, Jim. Thank you and Rose. You guys are truly, I'm so honored. That word comes to my mind and you're, you're one of those people, everybody, but we're so honored that you would join us. Like, that's seriously on my heart. That word honor, we honor you guys. We love you guys. So yes, Jamie will be here tonight. I asked Jamie if he'd give a word, so I'm hoping that's what happens. I'm so honored by the fullness that Jamie walks in and how he just, let's go back to that cup idea I was saying that Jamie's so filled up that when he walks around, he gets a little tipsy and spills some of that goodness out on everyone. So thank you, Father, that you filled Jamie up with your word and your grace in Jesus' name. Thank you for champagne as well. Brenda, I, I get it. <laughs> It's Heather, God bless you as well. Amen. Thank you so much, Heather. Um, Brenda, you said you wish you lived closer. I get what you're saying. It's so crazy. Like some of the wildest moments we have are with people who aren't from around here. But that's what's beautiful about this network. Uh, this is something that we talk about a lot. Denise, bless you. Thank you for joining us, Denise. Um, I, I thank the Lord for that provision that he's placed in you guys for taking care of you and your daughter. Praise the Lord. Like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Denise. Um, Brenda, I get that living closer thing. Uh, we've had so many people that, that want to travel and come here, and, and sometimes they do, and, and you've been here, and I'm so blessed by that. But the thing that I'm super excited about that we've been doing is this church on the go stuff and, and Jamie and Champagne are part of that and David and Nicole, there's several people. And it's crazy, this network the Lord is really molding together. It's, it's not so much about a place as it is 
obviously this is a very generic statement, but about his presence and his bride overflowing in these areas. And, and what, what I'm getting at with this is I'm excited to see that network of Christ starting to touch your area more. And there are already people there that I probably don't even know that who are walking this like yourself, that, that these areas are actually going to become smaller. They're, and we're going to become closer and closer. The bride is getting knitted closer and closer together. Amen. I, I, it's awesome that you feel connected and awesome birthday dinner. Amen. Amen. Well, we bless you and we say happy birthday in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that your word says we can live to be 120. And I thank you she's got many more blessings and many more years coming. <laughs> you might think that's a little wild, but that's what I say to people. All right. Well, I'll see some of you tonight and we will be live so you can join us. And we bless you in the Lord of uh, I totally believe that. I actually stepped out and prayed healing. Amen. Amen. Uh, with what you just said, I totally believe that I actually stepped out and prayed healing over my pastor. I want you guys to think about this. Um, I believe that the Lord's network is getting tighter and tighter. We're getting closer. The, like things are just blowing up. And, and here's what I just want you to do. Uh, many of you are in a place you might feel, um, discontent. You're not satisfied. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to bless your pastor. I want you to bless these people. Bless. And, and I'm not saying your pastor curses you at all. But here's what I want you to say. We're actually supposed to bless those who curse us. So I want you to bless everyone. Everyone's worthy of being blessing. I want you to pray for them. I want you to intercede for them. I understand that sometimes time can really make things hard and we hope deferred. You know, that it can be really hard on people because it's hard to be in a place that you, you don't see a fullness, but I want you to bless. Amen. Denise said, pray. Louise said, yes, amen. We are called to be people who bless. And I, you know what? Before I leave, I'm just going to go here because this is so much fire. Uh, let me get it. And this is hard. This is really, really hard for some people. But I want you to hear this, all right? Give me one second, please. Many of you have heard me say this, but it's the word of God. There's nothing wrong with it. All right. Okay. So if you have a second, go to James 3, and we're going to read verse 9, and we'll probably go to verse 12. James 3, verse 9 through 12. And... It's really hard to, to, like I was saying, it's really hard to be in places where you feel like there's not a fullness. But like I said, I believe when we bless people, we're, I didn't say this, but I did say the blessed part. What we do is we actually give, we agree with what the Lord says. So we give the Lord permission to go forth and to to, to bring life into that situation and to bring hope into that situation. See, the Lord wants us, wants somebody here, somebody, like literally think body, somebody. He wants someone to intercede because he's interceding on our behalf. And he wants somebody to agree with what his word says. And he wants somebody to agree with what the kingdom of heaven and the Holy Spirit's doing. And when we agree with it, it gives him permission to work in this area. So when we bless these pastors, when we bless our friends in Christ, when we bless brothers and sisters who don't look at things like we do, we're actually giving the Lord permission and agreement and thankfulness is a big key. We're giving him thanks and giving him permission to go work on our behalf because he says he is the Lord who fights for us. He does fight on our behalf for us. All right. So if you're in James 3, Verse nine, it says, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings. I want you to hear that again. I'm going to read that. It says, with the tongue, we praise the Lord and Father. Okay. With our tongue, we praise the Lord and Father, and with it, we curse human beings. And it says, who have been made in God's likeness. All right, this is really trying to prove a point here, and it's going to summarize here. But with our tongue, we curse people who have been made in God's image and his likeness. In verse 10, it says, out of the same mouth come praise and cursings. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. So 
what I'm getting at here and what James is getting at here is the fact that we cannot produce, we, we should not be double-minded for one, that's in James as well. We should not be people who curse things that have been made in God's image. If it's our brother and sister in Christ, and even if it's not our brother and sister in Christ, we call life. We give thanks to the Lord. When we give thanks, we're actually giving, uh, how's the word? Uh, there's a word that I use for this. I'm trying to bring it into remembrance. Father, help me. Um, more or less, when we give thanks, we're giving the Lord, which I already said this, the ability to go forth. We sanctify it, like we're giving cleansing to it. So that's why I say, and even in Peter, it says, like, give thanks for those who are leaders and authorities and, 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 and give thanks for all brothers and sisters. So I believe when we give thanks, for one, we're putting to work the blessing and we're putting to work the thankfulness that allows the Lord to go forth and actually do these things. Because I can't soften men's hearts. You get that? That's something the Lord does. All are made in his image, good, bad, and ugly. That, that's true. That, that's what this is saying here. Um, so let me just hit that point one more time and I'm gonna go. I can't, I can't soften people's hearts, but the Lord can soften a man's heart. The Lord can work in places that we can't, but when we agree, then he can go forth and do those things. And that's like beyond comprehension of, to the carnal mind. It doesn't make sense. <sighs> yeah, never mind where I'm gonna go there. But yeah, so here's what we're gonna do. Here's what today I want you to try to do. Amen, he did create it all. Amen, thank you, Denise. Um, today, I want you to take a, a few minutes, if you can, and just rest in the stillness of God and ask him to remind you, what are the things that you have been cursing that have been made in his image? I'm gonna say that again. I want you to get in the stillness of God and I want you to ask the Holy Spirit and let him lead you. What are some things that you have been cursing that have been made and created in his image that he wants you to bless? And I want you to repent of that and I want you to, to forgive yourself as well and understand that, that he has grace for you and that he wants you to bless and agree with his ways and see if he doesn't change it. When you start to bless Things will change in Jesus' name. I had to do that in my own life. I've blessed people that have cursed me. I've blessed people that didn't curse me. I've just started giving thanks for all God's people because that's what the word says. Every day I give thanks for President Joseph Biden. Every day I give thanks for Vice President Camille Harris. And some of you have heard me talk about these things and probably think I'm crazy. But that's what the word says to do. Give thanks for those who are in authority. It doesn't say just for those who you like. No, it says give thanks for those who are in authority. I give thanks for my bosses, my employers. I give thanks for those who are in authority in uh, judicial, all kinds of executive branches, whatever, in the government, um, Congress, Senate. I, I literally pray for them by name. And some of you have heard me do this before, but every day, this is what I do. I give thanks. That way, I'm agreeing with the plans of the kingdom of heaven and blessing them. And I want to encourage you today to find out what the Lord's leading you to today, to bless instead of curse, all right? And even small talk. You're welcome, Val. Bless you. And even these small things we say, murmuring, complaining, that's praying in the negative, just as we talked about in numbers earlier. Watch your mouth, watch what you complain about, and that's, that, that's a reality for me. Like, I gotta be careful on the, the little things that you talk about. It could be a, a joke, a passive joke, but it could actually be the abundance of your heart. It can be an indicator of what you're, you're cursing. Okay, I am going to stop. <laughs> I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'm so blessed that you would join us. And yeah, we'll see you tonight at 7 if you're online. We'll see you tonight at 7 if you're here in person, 227 Main Street, Brookville, Pennsylvania. We love you, and we're so honored that you would spend this time with us. We'll catch you later. Bye. Hey guys, man, I had a wonderful time today. I hope you did too. Hey, do me a favor. Go to brookvillehouseofworship.com. If you go there, you can find all of our events and, and things we do at Brookville House of Worship. Also, our Facebook page, Brookville House of Worship, and our YouTube page as well, Brookville House of Worship, or like we like to call it, Be How. Let me invite you to come every Saturday night to Brookville House of Worship, 227 Main Street, Brookville, Pennsylvania. We look forward to seeing you next time as we flow and grow together. See ya. Bye.